All right, next up in track three, we have Caitlin Falk, who is a technical security program manager at Zoom, former coworker of mine at Microsoft. Uh, she's here to talk to us about her talk, uh, Women in Security, and she's been recently named one of 2023's SIA Women in Security Power 100. Uh, her day job consists of accelerating Zoom's new product introduction security testing. Caitlin, whenever you're ready. Okay, who can teach me about threat modeling? I can. Let's do a tech talk. Who is attending the Diana Initiative? I am. Let's meet up in person. Congratulations on your promotion to Deputy CISO. Tell us about your path to get there. Okay, let's do a speaker series. This is just a snippet of the conversations that take place within Zoom's Women in Security group. No Women in Security group at your company? No problem. We're going to talk through that today. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Falk and I am Zoom's co-founder of our Women in Security group. And today I'm going to talk to you about creating a group, or maybe you're here as an ally and you're looking to help support someone that would like to step into this space. Okay, so a little bit about me before we jump in. Um, I am currently at Zoom and I am a Senior Security Technical Program Manager. Um, I'm based in the Seattle area, fully remote. As of right now, that may change, but right now I'm fully remote, which I love. It's very cool. Um, I started out my career in technical writing as, or at Costco Wholesale. And then I spent a couple years there in IT. I moved into consulting for a little while. And then I found my way, as Michael mentioned, into uh, Windows devices and gaming security. Now this was specifically uh, in a security awareness and training role. Um, I later transitioned into an FTE role there, um, and I was still in the program manager track. Um, and then I got the call, this is when we were in COVID lockdown, I got the call from Zoom to say, hey, can you come help us build out our security organization at that time? I would like to say that I was a little bit hesitant, but I was not. I was super, super excited to join Zoom and um, Work with the CISO there at the time that was building out that security organization. Um, during the time that I've been at Zoom, I've stayed in the technical program manager role. Um, I've supported a couple of different really cool teams during this time. The first team that I started supporting was our um, enterprise security team, so I worked closely with our partners in IT. Um, I spent a little bit of time supporting our global security and resilience team, so think uh, physical security as well as executive protections which is really cool, that was brand new for me. If you're interested in chatting about that, I'd love to share more about that. Um, I went away for a little bit, I had a baby, I came back from having my baby, who's now one. Um, and I started supporting our new product uh, introduction from a security testing and compliance perspective. Um, all of this while uh, creating a women's security group with many volunteers um, to drive the engagement in that women's security group. So that's a little bit about me and a little bit about my background. Um, I do want to share just a couple more things. Um, if you haven't noticed yet, out in the hall, there's a couple different booths. One of them is Lisa's Women in um, Cybersecurity. Um, I recently became engaged with them. I've been engaged with them from a membership perspective, but I recently was uh, offered up a speaker spotlight uh, through a program that they're running, which gives me access to this innovation of women, essentially a database of speakers. Um, so people like the, like the Diana Initiative or maybe Black Hat could take a look at those um, speakers within their database and say, hey, Caitlin's talk sounds cool, let's bring her into our next event. Um, so that's what that innovation women um, will it be there. Again, I'd love to chat with folks about, about how I kind of stumbled my way into that. Um, and then I do like to include sort of two fun kind of silly facts about myself. Um, one is that I do paddleboarding in the Seattle area, which is only a couple times out of the year. I'm not the best, but I can do it. Um, and then, again, being from Seattle, people love to talk to me about coffee. This actually just happened in the Uber yesterday. I'm coming from Seattle. Like, what's, your, what's your favorite coffee spot? What's your favorite coffee? Do not ask me that, please. My favorite coffee is putting the most amount of sugar that I can fit into a coffee cup. So that will be my response to you. I had to keep it light today because I thought I had to slow down my speaking and be engaging with all of you. But, um, so just a little bit about me before we jump into why we are here today. Now, originally, I had planned this talk about how, how you can stand up your women in security group, which of course we'll talk through. Um, I got some great feedback from, from some people in the group that said, can you start off by talking about why? Now, many of you that um, maybe are involved in other women in security groups or have been thinking about making your own group for a while, that may seem like a no-brainer to you. Of, like, of course, why would I not come into a space if there's not a women in security group and either stand one up or maybe support someone in that space. 
Um, I've identified three areas that have been um, very top of mind for me as I step through this um, with the group that I helped stand up. One of that is very obvious, is that sense of community of bringing folks together, just like we're doing today. Um, it can be hybrid, it can be um, remote, of course it can be in person, um, but you immediately feel that sense of community, kind of similar to the same way I felt when I walked in you know, to this conference today. So you will feel that with your group. It might take some time as your group gets stood up to feel that and gain that trust from members, but we'll talk more about that later. Um, <clears throat> The last two year representation shift. Uh, if you were in the last talk, you heard Meryl talk about the latest metrics in cybersecurity specifically. For women, I think we're around 24, maybe 25 percent now. Um, so you may be feeling that when you step into different meetings in your organization. You may feel it as you go to different conferences, whatever it may be. But the most powerful thing is when you step into a women in security group, you see that representation shift. It's almost the opposite, right? You're closer to 75, if not 100. Um, that's extremely powerful and very comforting, and so um, it's just something that I've experienced. It's an amazing feeling, and you don't really know it until you experience it. So that's what I mean when I say representation shift. And then probably the most obvious of why you should create a women's security group is the resources and knowledge. Um, you have that at your fingertips with the members that are engaged, and then you'll have that as well with different allies that are, that are involved with the group. Um, so we won't spend too much time on this because I think it is obvious for some folks, but I do want to call this out of the why. You may have your own reasons, and I ask you to kind of step through those or discuss those with someone as you step into how you create your security. Okay, so let's talk through what I'm calling the four steps to success to create your women in security group. Um, we're going to go through these in more detail on the following slides. Um, but number one is establishing your group leadership. We'll talk through what that means and how you can do that. Step two is creating your mission statement and goals. Um, I'll make an argument about the um, mission statement and why I believe that's so critical to setting up the foundation of your group and that you can build goals on top of. Um, step three is my favorite step because it's about the members. We'll talk through how you recruit and then how you retain those members throughout um, months or years within your limited security group. And then number four is listen and adjust. Um, of course, we'll talk in more detail about this, but this may look like uh, one-on-ones with folks, this may look like surveys that you put out at a certain amount of years or a certain amount of times per year. Um, but okay, can we do it? Four steps of success. They're very high level, but we've got a short amount of time, so we're gonna we're gonna go through these together. Okay, so step one, establish your group leadership. Now, I hope that by seeing all of your faces in the room today, that if I ask you the question of are you ready to stand up a women in security group? that you would all scream up and down and say yes. Now I understand some of you may be here as allies in the room to how you can support someone else stepping into this role. All participation is extremely valid. Um, so are you ready to create your women's security group? Yeah. <laughs> now, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but I also understand that you may have some hesitations of like, hold on, I'm not ready to buy this yet. You need to sell it to me a little bit more. So these four, are the four women in the picture or the four or the four um, bullets here are some of the concerns that I definitely dealt with and that I hear from women as well as they step through this gosh, do I want to be that person that's leading in? What does that look like? How is that going to affect my work life balance, my day job? Um, and then the second bullet here, which I like to swap the order a little bit around the budget. Like, hold on, I'm not signing up for something unless you give me some dollars that associate with it. So I will say that I do not believe that you need a budget or dollar bills to stand up your women in security group. The biggest resource that you're going to need to start is time, which is why I have time commitment there. Um, I hear from a lot of different folks that, yeah, I'd like to do it, but I just think it's going to take too much time, or you know, I already have enough going on in my personal life or my day job. I get it. I hear you. We all, we all are dealing with something good or bad, whatever it may be. But I ask you to share that with someone. Say, hey. I'm really interested in standing up my room in the security group, but I am a little concerned about time, right? Talk to your manager, talk to your director, and they may go, oh wow, I had no idea you may wanted to do it. So use your voice, tell someone that you're interested in doing it. They may help create some space for you and say, oh, okay, well, I've been giving you these extra projects, but now that I know you're interested in something else, we can slow that down a little bit, or let's just have that conversation. Um, all, all great conversations to have. You also may run into, hey, I want to make my women's security group. Do you want to partner with me? And they might go, 
maybe, well, well we can split it 50-50 or whatever that, whatever that time is. So again, use your voice to get over that first bullet, which is time commitment, because I think if you step into that, you say, I'm interested in doing this, I think someone, it may take you a little bit of time to find the people, but someone will help you um, with that burden if, if you do do that. Uh, again, I mentioned budget. Now I think you budget, of course, helps all of us with many different things, especially with standing up a group like this. But I think to get started, you have so many tools and so many different resources at your fingertips. Um, I mentioned that I work for Zoom, so of course we used uh, our Zoom team chat to bring our group together virtually. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later when we talk about um, recruiting and retaining your members, but I argue that you have a similar tool at your company where you can bring uh, members together. It's probably a free tool for you, right, that your companies are using. You have your calendaring tools. Um, some of you may be hybrid, so you may be able to see some of your uh, potential members in person. Uh, but don't let that initial budget aspect deter you from standing something up. Um, I talked through a little bit of the tooling. And my personal favorite, which is self-doubt, because I struggled with this quite a bit, of I would love for there to be a women in security group, but I don't think I'm that person. I mean, I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to let this person do it. She seems more qualified. She seems more passionate about it. I'm going to sit back. So I had those conversations in my head. I didn't say, do you want to lead it, or I'm interested in doing it, and I kind of sat back. And it actually took, from my specific um, experience, that person changing roles for me to go, oh, like, there's a noticeable gap there. Like, maybe I'll see if I can get a little bit closer to saying, hey, I would like to lead this. Um, so I hope that we can together squash those four concerns, so tackle them together, um, because those are, again, some of the biggest that I hear when I ask people, like, are you ready to start your group? Do you want to step into that leadership role? Um, if you have any questions or different, um, I don't know, concerns as you're stepping into this group leadership role, then find me and let's help them squash those and tackle them together, because I think they need to do it. Okay, so remember, our step one. Establishing your group leadership team, are you ready to step into the leadership role? If not, let's talk through some of these and let's find you a person or talk to your manager to create more time to be able to tackle this. It's crazy powerful to say, yes, I'm ready to step into this space and I challenge all of us to do it. Okay, step number two is creating your vision statement and goal for your limited security. Now here's an example here that we have written uh, on Zoom. I won't read it to you, but I'll let you guys read it in time. And I would argue that creating your mission statement is one of the most important aspects of creating your group because it's really setting that foundation for your group for how you can build your goals off of those. Um, and then I'll rattle off a couple of different groups that will say, oh, you want to make that group, that sounds great. What is it going to be about? Like, show me that you thought through this, show me that you are passionate about this. That may, it may look like folks in your DE and IT to go, oh, this is great, you want to, you want to see something up like this? Contribution statement. It may be someone um, from a potential executive sponsor position. It may be your CISO. Um, I recommend getting it documented and be ready to share it out with those groups um, when the time is right. Um, it will also be a great foundation to start building some of your goals off of. Uh, my recommendation for the create uh, the goals off of your vision statement is to keep it extremely simple. Right? You just signed up to do to lead your women's security group, let's keep it very simple using the tools that you already have, the internal resources that you already have. Um, so an example of what we did at Zoom was drive member participation and engagement via group events, right? That can look like a number of different things. One thing that we did at Zoom was we said, okay, we're gonna create a speaker series, which is internal speakers, so we're tapping our own network. We're using our own tools to stand it up, so what, what, what do people that are concerned about budget here, free, 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 okay. We'll, we'll leave Caitlin alone and she can go do her thing with the women's security group. So um, use the resources that you have and um, get, get your mission statement documented because it's going to be the foundation for your group as well as the goals that you build. Now, I do have a challenge for all of you for number two here. Create your mission statement and your goals. I'm going to hold it till the end and I'm going to ask all of us to come back to them. So just keep that in mind. It's not a test, but it will be a challenge that we, that we want. Okay, now step three, recruit and retain your members. This is my favorite step, like I mentioned earlier, because it is about the members, which is arguably the most important part of your group. Now, this is one important aspect that I wanted to mention with the group leadership. This is key. Um, so let me just jump back a little bit. So, I'll, I'll hold it. This is fine. Um, so we talked a little bit about tooling when it comes 
comes to recruiting your members. Now, given if you're a hybrid or maybe you're remote, this might look a little bit different or if you're in person. Um, but something that you can use to initially recruit those members is tooling. So an example that I, I mentioned earlier was at Zoom, we, we pulled all of the women that sit within our CISO structure into a chat channel. And we said, okay, this is our initial recruit of these members. We put them in the chat channel, of course they could easily leave or you know, mute the channel, whatever they would like. Um, but that was sort of our initial scrub to pull those members in. And we said, hey, we're making the women in security group, you are a part of it, please stick around for what we call our kickoff event. Now this was really the first time that we brought these uh, members together. We talked a little bit about um, what we'd like to see out of the group, and most importantly, we put in front of them the mission statement. We said, hey, give us your feedback. Um, we may be able to, to tweak some of the wording here based on the feedback. People were very excited. The men that were pulled into this group were very excited. Ideas came flooding in the chat channel, people coming off you. All of these great ideas. It was amazing, but it was also, as someone in the group leadership, extremely overwhelming because I wanted to deliver to my members. Uh, so I have a dedicated uh, co-founder who's fantastic, thanks Anne, who knows her. Um, we partnered together and we helped share the responsibilities. Um, something that came out of something like a kickoff meeting is you can say, hey, we're looking to do this group. Here's our mission statement. Is it amazing? Give us feedback. Share your ideas. Again, I said all the ideas keep flooding in. It's very overwhelming for two people to say, okay, deliver this, deliver that, deliver this. So then we said, okay, who wants to volunteer? Who wants to support? I loved your idea about book club. Do you want to lead it? Some people stepped into that. Some people didn't. That's all out. That's completely fine. Other people may step through those same concerns that we mentioned on that uh, step one of the different time and in our maybe budget. Uh, but just keep that in mind that you can ask for additional help, you can ask for volunteers um, to help push out some of those events and keep them going. So that's something that we did at Zoom. Uh, I recommend doing a similar structure of having a kickoff meeting to let folks know that you are standing up this group. Give them an initial place to put their feedback and to put their ideas. Keep, save the chat channels, document every, or all of the feedback that you get because you're going to want to come back to that information to help deliver to some of your members of what we would like to see. Um, some of the ideas that we got from um, our members were, I mentioned a speaker series, then people wanted to kind of pivot a speaker series to become more technical, so they wanted to see tech talks, um, they wanted to do a book club, um, they wanted to do in-person events, and some of those we were able to deliver on, and some of them were a little bit more challenging, being a little bit more hybrid. Um, but you'll get tons of great ideas, and don't don't be afraid to say, hey, I need help, right? Like, let's volunteer, let's partner. Um, <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about retaining. Now, retaining those members, I would argue, when you do your events, that's your opportunity to help retain those members. They're giving you time to say, hey, I'm going to come to this event. Deliver to them and try and help grab them for, hey, this is a current event, or maybe we have you know, a tech talk coming up in two months, so please stay engaged. Um, you'll be able to value, or you'll be able to see that uh, engagement. People may reach out to you one-on-one -on -one or one -on -one. Um, they may want to uh, just put their feedback in the chat channel. Um, we'll talk here in just a second about uh, sort of formally collecting that information. But keep an eye. People are different. People work differently. They want to share their feedback differently. You'll see not everyone will be you know, in the chat channel and voicing their opinion for their engagement. Um, they may want to submit that to you in other ways. So just keep that in mind. Okay, this is your step three. My favorite because it's about the members. And then step four is also extremely important. This is to listen and adjust as the group is stood up, as well as maturing over time. Um, right away, I would argue, even before you get your kickoff meeting on calendar, to figure out how you're going to collect that feedback. Um, it's great that people maybe want to set up time with you or want to put it in a chat channel, but just figure out a simple way that you're collecting it all in one place. It may look like a document, it may look like a spreadsheet, whatever it may be. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Just remember, you don't have a budget, you just have the tools that you have. Uh, to figure out how you're going to do that. Uh, I assume we used a simple Google form to collect that feedback on a quarterly basis. Um, and then as we delivered things to our members, we said, hey, we heard you, that speaker series went great initially, and now we want to pivot to a tech talk. Thank you for the feedback we're adjusting based on that feedback. That was key for our members. Um, we talked a little bit about observing the engagement and making sure that folks um, continue to stay engaged and how that may look different for different people based on a number of different um, aspects. Um, as well as continuing to ask for 
for um, ideas and involvement, don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it's from your co-founder or you continue to do a call for volunteers. Um, we, at, at Zoom, we've sort of, um, I don't know, we've gotten to this rhythm with our members and like every, every month we're gonna ask for volunteers. So we understand maybe you can't offer your time this month, but just know there'll be opportunities coming up in the future, um, which has created a really nice balance for folks that maybe want to step in and then appropriately step out as their time maybe just. Okay, so that was our step four, listening and adjusting as the group is stood up and also starts maturing over time. You're gonna have to change, most likely change some of the events that you're running and keep an eye on how that Okay, so remember I said with your create your mission statement and your goal, I have a challenge for all of you, whether you're sold or not, on creating your group. I would ask that you please go out, spend five, ten minutes, and say, I will create a mission statement for women's group. It may be as someone that wants to step into a leadership position, it may be an ally that is looking to help support someone in that role. Go out, take a look at, there's a number of different resources that you can go out to. Um, just recently, I want to say in the past couple of months, the Cyber Crime Magazine pushed out 50 women in security groups and associations to uh, become involved in or keep track of. It's been a nice, you can Google it, it's a nice, um, nice, easy, consumable format. Go out there and take a peek at those if you need some inspiration. We'll be doing the initiative business from there. Uh, go out, write your mission statement, okay? Put it on a back of, you know, scratch this paper, put it on a napkin. I don't care how you do it. And the goal would be to share it with someone. It can be someone that you work with, it can be someone outside of work, but I want you to see where that conversation takes you because again, if you're speaking up, you're taking up that great space of saying, this is something I'm potentially interested in doing, give me your feedback on maybe what the actual mission statement is, or it could lead you into the conversation I mentioned earlier about time commitment. If I share this with my manager and say, hey, I'm thinking of this, I'll keep I know that you're interested in doing that, let me help you create some space for, oh, I spoke with someone else and she's also interested, let me work. Is that something that folks think that they can do? Five or ten minutes. Do it in between talks if you want. If you would like help or you would like someone else to talk to about it or different ideas, I'm more than happy to talk with different folks um, about how to do it or different resources that you can use. Okay, so I just want to review these steps together, which I'm calling our four steps to success to create your women in security group. Number one is establishing your group leadership, right? Are you going to do it? I have no doubt you had that enthusiasm at the beginning. I hope that you still have it. You can do it. Um, you're going to work on creating a mission statement for your women's security group. And if you would like, you can challenge yourself to create some goals. Um, we talked a little bit about recruiting and retaining those members and what that engagement looks like over time. And then last, but certainly not least, is adjusting, listening and adjusting to the group as it stood up and matures over time. So you can continue to start delivering those events to the members. Okay, four steps. It's high level, but we can do it. Okay. That's all I have for today. Yeah. <laughs> if you feel like you're to step into this space or to potentially encourage someone else to step into this space, and um, I'm here for questions. Um, if not now, I'll find me later. I'll get black and happy to speak, but to chat or just say hi, but it's okay to do it. Any questions? Well, yeah. Thank you. That's really incredible. Um, I want to touch a little bit about budget. Yes. It's always a, a, a challenge. It is. It is. Um, so we do have um, non-monetary things that we can do and, and to, excite, to get people excited and kind of like follow that. Lead. Yes. But how do we actually get a budget, especially in, like, what would you recommend um, to do following and finding that budget, especially with how strict everything is around budget. Yes. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I do like to say you don't need it to start, but it certainly helps as you get going. And I think that um, a lot of leaders that potentially have a budget to give, they want to see that you're able to do it for a little bit. I would ask that you get it documented, what you want, why you want it, and what the return would be back to the group or the larger company. Um, something that's really cool about the way that we're structured at Zoom is our women in security group sits under our larger women at Zoom and community resource group. Um, so we're able to leverage funds that they have, um, and they try and disperse it out equally. But if we come prepared and we come ready, we want this speaker because this, and she's going to return this, that sure speaks volumes as opposed to someone else or another event. It's like, oh, I have like 20000 this year, maybe we'll, you know, get some stickers or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I would, I would, I would say document it and then get it in front of the, the right people if you know them, and then do not stop. They might tell you no, do not stop. It might be a monthly meeting that you have with them, or you're just, hey, you know, you got 20 bucks laying around, can you throw it our way? Or you can get really resourceful and potentially find people, um, maybe at this conference, that would come in and speak. Uh, but again, I don't want you to call people just because they're free, you want you to show up to show so, Great question, thank you. Yes? One second, great talk. This is so critical, really, really good. Um, when you're going to other groups of women from, a, from the same board that has the hierarchies, yes. when you're trying to get into this kind of more linear structure, like a semi-social group, how do you navigate that? Like if you've got senior level folks and associate level folks, how do you create that space so that that women's group feels more like a round table? Yes, so you're kind of breaking it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I can say something that's helped a little bit was that speaker series that I mentioned. Um, we did have some of our women in leadership come in and do those talks, which was great. Sometimes we know a little bit more about them because they do have that platform. Um, so we swapped things a little bit. We had some um, lower level, if you will, or more junior people come in and do uh, their talks initially. And it actually took some time to get that engagement from some of our higher end because everyone was just so swamped. Um, so we focused on kind of flipping that upside down a little bit, and that worked very well. Um, and then I do see some of our women in security, people that are in leadership outside from a, like you said, a structure perspective, they'll come in and they'll say, hey, I want to volunteer for this. And I'll say, cool, Sandra's volunteering to do this. And it's really interesting to watch how the group reacts to that, because she's almost telling the group, yeah, I'm stepping in as a volunteer, I'm not coming in as a, you know, head of whatever that person's leading. So that's helped a little bit. And it is a difficult thing that you have to work but I think it really um, lands on the shoulders of the person that's in that leadership position to create a field. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, um, your, your focus on engagement seems to center around joining and being an attendee in an event. How do you get the engagement in those top levels and get people to more organically interact with your community? Yes, that's something that I had to learn sort of the hard way because I thought, Gosh, if I don't have you know, 30 plus people in the in the speaker series, or I don't have people in the chat channel, they're not here. But they are. People learn and engage in different ways, and you may never see someone pop into a chat channel or a uh, one of the events that we have, and that's fine, right? Like they will either tell you or show you in other ways that they're engaged, and they actually learn quite a bit about that from one of the ones that I have, folks. Which again might not be someone's style, but sorry, I'm going all the time. Thank you, everybody. Come find me.